It was supposed to be a faster trip for commuters, but today, the first run on a brand new route ended in tragedy. Three people were killed and more than 100 hurt when the train derailed, spilling cars onto the interstate below. The deadly accident happened about 50 miles southwest of Seattle in DuPont, Washington, along the busy I-5 interstate. This video just in from the scene tonight. Investigators say once the wrecked train has been stabilized, their priority is to recover its data recorder in hopes that it will offer information about the cause. CBS 2's Tony Ilo has more on that and this ongoing investigation. Tony. Christine, the questions. Was it a problem with the train, the track, or the crew on board Amtrak 501? Tonight, the National Transportation Safety Board is assembling a team to get to the bottom of this deadly tragedy. Monday night, work lights illuminate the jumbled mess at the derailment site. A disastrous end for the first day of Amtrak's enhanced service in the Pacific Northwest. Amtrak 501, emergency. We are on the ground. We got cars everywhere and down onto the highway. 13 train cars derailed during their inaugural passenger trip along newly rebuilt tracks south of Seattle. More than 70 passengers suddenly jolted into chaos. Kind of falling over and the seats in front of me had come dislodged and were swinging around. Right away you knew that uh, this was not something uh, something minor. Uh, you, you, you felt that right away. Stuff started flying around and uh, just brushed myself off and I was glad I was okay. At least three passengers died, but amazingly, no one in the crumpled vehicles on I-5 was fatally injured. First responders rushed to the scene and drivers also did what they could to help. I saw smoke. Next thing you know, myself and a few others are trying to get people medical care when we can. They cut the ribbon on the new service just last week with new trains, including one locomotive that was crushed when it fell to the ground Monday. Amtrak and other agencies spent tens of millions to upgrade former freight train tracks to accommodate passenger rail moving at 80 miles an hour. Absolutely before they ran this train, they had to run test trains and the locomotive engineers and the operating crews had to become familiar with this track, so to speak. Herzman says the NTSB will consider every possible factor, including whether there was debris on the track and how fast the train was moving. The speed limit drops from 80 to 30 right at the curve where the derailment happened. Christine.